What's up, everybody? Oh, my God. Hey, let me ask everyone something. Can everyone hear us okay? Uh-huh. That's not what I wanted to ask. But has anybody watched the Skinwalker Ranch? Oh, yeah. That was great. Oh, my God. Surprisingly. I, like, it, it exceeded, yeah. far exceeded my expectations, I, I will s- say. I want to know what people think about This ain't even that cold. I just took it out of the beer fridge. Mm. Sorry. Uh, what is up? So today, I don't know when you guys want to get started here in a second, but we are going to do a little bit more of the Tim's the Thames torso. Oh, case. yes. I've been, I've been doing some research into this. Now, I'm not saying that Jack the Ripper is the Tim's killer. Okay. But I found some stuff today that is, I don't know, is, is making me believe if he is, and I haven't done Jack the Ripper yet, mm-hmm. if he is, I would right now, and I haven't done all the cases, all the other torsos, I would say that he would be a butcher and not a surgeon. Interesting. Okay. Shram posted the link that he may be a cigar maker. Some guy is writing a book. It, I will say it does seem like every year a someone out, comes out, someone solves the Zodiac Killer and someone solves the Jack the Ripper case. So I don't know. May, maybe he's right, but I don't know, man. Like some of this stuff, I don't think it's just a cigar maker is going to be sadistic enough, you know? I don't think so. But hey. The last episode, Yes. The Tim's murder. Mary Shelley. Okay, okay. Hold on, <laughs> hold on a second. That, is, that was a good bomb. Hold okay. on a second. Okay, okay. Yes, I did say we would cover the Mary Shelley one, but I I found an earlier one and it's, I decided to go back a few years before any of that happened. Okay. So my bad on that. Yes, I did that as, as a cliffhanger, halfway knowing I wasn't going to do that episode today. <laughs> Are, are we going to go back to that? Yeah, or? we are going to go back to it, I promise. Okay. But I want to go back to 1873. So okay. the last one was 1888, right? Yes. All right. So we're going to go on the Google Earth. And we're not talking about Jack the Ripper per se, or maybe we are. I don't know yet because I haven't covered all these torso murders. Okay. But I'm not just going to do one blanket episode over the whole thing and call it quits. I mean, I, I'm guessing Morbid did like one or two episodes on the shit. I'm going to go back and research every torso. Torso, and that's what they're called, torsos. That's what the murders are called. Right. I'm going to research everyone using old newspapers because a lot of the thing, things that I've uncovered, even with this one, are very telling. Things that I haven't seen anywhere else, but, and, and I can, I will test to that. I don't think anyone's talking about this stuff. Mostly because the newspapers are too damn hard to freaking read. Mm. It literally took me an hour to read one article because it was, I mean, this is from the 1800s, super old, right? But, I feel that I know it's going to be kind of drawn out, but you guys are going to get a lot more meat out of it if we go back. Is that intentional? (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, Brandon. We're actually just getting started. (laughs) I mean, look at this shit, man. (laughs) It's hard Uh, to 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 read, dude. So what what was this dated newspaper? Uh, This newspaper is dated September 11th. No, I'm just kidding. September 9th. What year? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) I was like so in the September 11th thing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Tonight, we're actually going to September 7th, 1873. This is seven years. Wait, can I count? No, that's five years. Oh, God. Doesn't matter. Just estimate. Yeah, this is less than 10 years. This is five years before our last episode. Okay. So I didn't know this one existed. And, you know, to my credit, this book that I'm reading. Also didn't know? No, they did know, but they put it in some weird order. And they're English. So you know how they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he probably probably he was drinking his tea and he spilled the tea all over the manuscript and then he's like switching. Ah, yeah, so. Pages. Anyway, I'm going back. This is supposedly the first one. Now, I'm not saying Jack the Ripper is this guy or the Tim's torso murderer is even one guy, much less Jack the Ripper. But I'm saying a lot of the stuff I found for today's episode is very telling when it comes to cutting off the flesh of a female victim, right? Mm-hmm. All right. September 7th, 1873, Dukes Shore, Lion House seems like a good beer name. Mm-hmm. I think it uh, it's a produce company, actually. Oh. Tonight we're going to Lime House. This is it right here, and this is in the River Thames. Thames. I know. I'm just saying that the River Thames. So let's see. Where was the first uh, ones that we did? It was. 
mud chute. Hmm. Let's see. I think it was. Oh, it was right over here. Yeah, it was right around here. Remember this? The uh, well, the Shakespeare one or whatever. The Globe Theater. Mm-hmm. The Globe Theater. All right. So keep in mind, we're going back to 1873. This is yep. before the one I talked about last time. This supposedly is the first one before Jack the Ripper and everything else. This was really popular in the news because of the the atrociousness of the crime mm-hmm. because of the cutting up of the glims and the yada yada and cutting the breast off type of thing. Right. No one's ever seen that. And then Jack the Ripper comes along if it's not the same guy, I don't know. And his story kind of took over. Mm-hmm. But if Jack the Ripper didn't exist, we may be calling him this Tim's murder. Right. Right. You understand where I'm at? Yeah. All right. So, and I found some really interesting stuff you guys are going to love. September 7th, 1873, Duke Shore Limehouse from the Times in London, that paper I just showed you, the mutilated portions of a woman's body were found in the Thames as described yesterday. There is little room for doubt to a person who met their death by murder. All right. Mm. So I'm just going to jump in it. No, like, I mean, you guys know this is another we know course. What we're here of, okay. For. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not going to make it all like dramatic shit, right? Police found, and it was a police, a couple police officers who found the first one. A torso was found on the 7th. And then right after that, two more portions were found in of the same body part. A right thigh was being picked up in the river off Woolwich, a right shoulder with a part of the arm off Greenwich. Here's something kind of weird about this. This is like a good notes, literally. Okay. Because you don't you don't see these little details, but these details are really important. The right thigh, this is the fir- or first torso. First torso is found. Mm-hmm. The right thigh picked up off the river, the right shoulder with part of the arm. The right shoulder was, quote, smeared with tar. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So we're trying to find out his profession. If we decide as a community here, that us the torso and, murderer us is and you, Jack the Ripper. That's the first thing. If we all unanimously agree that it's the same person. It could be. If we decide it is all of us community, then we need to start mapping out, you know, his occupation. Who has access to tar? How expensive was tar back then? I know they would tar, tar and feathers, like that was a real thing. But where was, where's tar found? Because she, her arm of this woman, this unidentified woman, was smeared with tar. Why was it smeared with tar? A roof builder? This is what we need to, to look into. No one, no one has talked about this. Well, I can't say that because I haven't read any Jack the Ripper books. Maybe they have, but I, I don't know. If they have, then I'm sorry. But I'm telling you, like these little details, that's what matters to me. Yeah, good point. Let's go over some of the witness statements, okay? The first witness was Richard Fain, a 36-year-old Tim's policeman. We were rowing up the river towards the Chelsea Bridge, having come from Somerset House. About half past six, we were opposite of the Batter Sea Waterworks and off the Surrey Shore. The tide was then very near low water. I observed something on the shore about three or four yards from the water. I put the boat ashore and told one of my brother officers to get out and see what it was. He went to it and then he called me to come and see it. I saw that it was a portion of a woman's body being the left breast entire. I took the piece to the Tim's police station ship, the Royalist, off the Tim's embankment and my superior directed me to bring it to the parish where I had found it. I did so and the inspector at Battersea sent for Dr. Kempster, the divisional surgeon who saw this portion of the body in my presence. This police officer, the first thing he finds is a breast. That's it. A boob. I mean, a severed breast. All right, so let's think what killers we have covered that have the, I don't know, gag response to sever off a breast. Not many. Well, uh, I don't know. A lot of our killers probably could. I mean, well, so I don't think Ted Bundy could, you know, because he's, that's not what he does. You know what I'm saying? I don't think. All right, Eddie, good old Eddie could have. I mean, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't know who's another killer. Freaking, um, well, Jeffrey Dahmer could. But I'm saying like Richard Cottingham's what who comes to mind. Uh-huh. So someone to do that, like immediately I'm thinking, okay, he's probably has the same sort of effed up mental state mm-hmm. as a Cottingham individual. Because a lot of the killers we cover, they can't do that. We've covered killers, especially kids, who try to chop up the body and stuff and just quit. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's pretty gruesome mm-hmm. to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, not that 
I've ever done it twice, but you know. Just the one time. Another policeman, Henry Locke. On Friday morning, I was on duty at the Bruswick Wharf, Nine Elm. I was welding on the wharf about half past 10 that morning on Tim, on the Thames front when I saw something floating in the water. The something was about six feet off the wall and I, thinking it was a sheepskin, threw some stones at it. But as it continued to float slowly down, I got a man on a barge to pick it out of the water and then I turned and found that it was the right breast of a woman. So they're finding a breast before they find anything else. Now, one thing that you're going to hear about this one, this is the first one. There is a head. Okay. But, okay. We didn't have a head the last body that okay. we talked about, which was five years later. Okay. There's a head. Can which we means, identify her? Which means whoever did this... Learn. Learn. Because, and why do I say that? Because the arms were You can't what? identify anything else. Like the head was is the only thing that they could identify. The that. arms, the shoulder, and the forearm were complete without a hand. So he didn't want fingerprints. Ah. He, he didn't think about the head though. Okay. So this guy is learning. And and there was nothing else in between this or so and the one five years later. No, not that's that a I... That's gap. That's a huge gap. It's a huge gap, which makes me think that this may not be a serial killer or at least yet. Because m- most people who want to do this, they don't wait five so maybe, years. Especially if they don't get caught. My theory, and I know I'm getting too overly excited here. My th- Just think about this. Could he have been in a relationship and wanted to dispose of the woman? Something got too heated mm. and it's an accident. Like the first one loses control. But then he's like, well, shit, I kind of like doing this. Tries to suppress the urges. And another fact I'm going to make, which guys, I don't know if- I like it, our theory. If, I, no idea if it's accurate, but I, it's got legs. As of right now, let's just assume that this killer is the same as Jack the Ripper. Let's okay. just assume that. It could be. Okay, let's just assume that. So, and, and maybe we'll backtrack later. But as you'll see in a minute, which I don't know if, if any other books or whatever talked about this, but there is a very important fact that is little discussed that suggests to me that this may have been a domestic argument gone murder, gone trying to hide the body. The guy didn't know what he was doing. He cut off the hands uh, trying to, to thwart the investigation, thwart the police to identify the body mm-hmm. because he didn't cut the head off. So, But the head, as you're going to see, was it can't be identified anyway. It's it's too bad. Okay, he gonna, left it on. I was going to say, wouldn't they oh, have yeah. a good lead with like who that person was associated with? Well, we'll get to that. I went towards the shore, Duke Shore Limehouse, and found the people had before them in the water the head of a woman with the bone out. It was the face and scalp of a head and had the ears, eyelashes, but no eyes, the nose partly cut off, and the upper lip cut through. So was the cheek. Oh, what's up, Natasha? I, we see, see you in there. Every time you get on here, I want some pizza. <laughs> anyway, so you see now why I wanted to go back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and do it's this important. do this the right way. I know it's going to be like, oh my god, another torso episode. That's okay. But you know, it is important. what it is. All right, September seventh. Two more portions were found. Same body, the right thigh. Like I said, the right shoulder, the right shoulder with part of the arm smeared with tar. It is certain the the coroner made it certain that he believes that they were placed in the water separately. All the body parts were replaced in the water separately. Because we already talked about the currents weren't the natu- currents. weren't going to put people And they were there. placed within hours of each other. Interesting. And I did see, which I'll read here in, in a quote, that there may have been some knowledge on the current flow, or at least the water conditions, whether it be okay. a storm or whatever. Quote, the heavier portions at least were committed to the river, not very far from the place where the Wandle, I think it's the Wandle, I, the news, I can't damn read the freaking newspaper. The Wando or Waddle or something. It's like really hard to read. Where the Wando enters the Thames and had washed down with the tide to where they were found. One to Battersea, which is about a couple miles from Wando, and the other part a little below that a few hours later. Mm -hmm. The body had been cut up, quote, beyond doubt, end quote, short time before the putting it in the water. With And this is a corner saying that. Beyond doubt, it had been cut up and immediately put into the water within in the, the next hour. Mm. So if this was a domestic uh, thing, you have a scared killer yep. who is now frantically cutting up the body and trying to dispose it. Maybe. Death was caused by a blow on the right temple. The one that we, the episode that we did last week, we didn't know the cause We don't of know because there was, there was no was bruises. No yeah, there's no head. There was no bruises on the torso, so we knew it wasn't but, beat yeah. in the torso. But now we have definitive proof, de- definitive proof that the first one, quote, death was caused by a blow to the right temple. The scalp shows it was 
the blow was hard enough to have crushed in the skull. Instant death. This is exactly what the coroner said. As I said, parts were found that had been in the water, but only a few hours. Okay. The breast, and we got one, the other one's going to be found too. The breast to the medical eye. All right, keep this in mind. This is one of the important things we can write on the list. The breast, the right breast to the medical eye had once been suckled at some distant time, making her a recent mother. Breastfeeding. That's what suckled is. I know what suckled is. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. We were watching a documentary and it was about this guy who would buy breast milk. And I don't know why. Maybe he's just a weirdo. But then they came out and said, oh, yeah, I'm I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. I'm like, fucking great. Okay. (laughs) I think he was in the military. <laughs> we have some weirdo body. That's a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was using it for like bodybuilding. I forget what 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 well, that he, was. It, a it wasn't working for him. <laughs> They're trying to figure out who this woman is. They got her head. All they got to do is match it up. Uh, yeah, I know her. But the head is pretty bad, as you're going to see. Oh, you have a picture? No, I, no pictures. Oh. But to view the body, because there's this thing called morbid curiosity, where a lot of people are like, yeah, that's that may be my sister. Let me go see. Ooh, there's oh, a, that's fucked. Yeah, dude. That is so fucked. As we have like 10 people in here. <laughs> <laughs> Just on a random Wednesday. Hey, guys. <laughs> Wednesday at work. <laughs> <laughs> We're feeding some habits. It's fine. So that was a big thing back then. So you actually had to fill out an application and prove that you may know someone that Missing. this could be. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I didn't. I mean, it was you a whole You would think that's not process. a problem, but apparently it, it's a problem. Uh, yeah, it's always been a problem. All right. Um, one man, an older man, claimed that it was his daughter. He filled out the application and... And they took him to the dead house, mm-hmm. which I'm pretty sure is a shed, <laughs> quote, where the severed breasts were taken from a shelf and put together. And the ghastly face having the severed nose with the scalp thinly covered with hair was taken from a jar of spirits and laid before him, end quote. So also back in the day, they didn't have formaldehyde or they didn't know what it was or didn't use it. So they just put it in liquor. So <laughs> all the body parts, they put it in liquor. That would be, you know how like people eat watermelon soaked in liquor? Imagine Ew. eating an Ew, arm. stop. Sorry. I was why? Playing, no. I was playing that far, that forest game and I ate that arm. That's why. It's a fucking stupid video game. <laughs> this was a woman in the prime of her life. Robust health. The face, however, was, quote, terribly hacked about, but was the kind that was once a characteristic one. The features being most marked. So imagine pretty, maybe. I don't know what that means. Different. Easy to identify, maybe. The right breast. And I put a little bit about the description. This doesn't matter because there's no way we can tell. But the right breast had a wart or a mole on it. Her cheek was that of being burnt in childhood in such a way to leave a lifelong scar. This is basically identification, stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm um, surprised that those things weren't enough to go on, actually. Well, this was also a very dark, which I didn't see black or, you know, whatever, just very dark. So that's interesting. I mean, I've never been to London, but very dark skin, Hmm. fully developed woman. Now, let me throw this crazy wrench in here, guys. Okay. Because And I don't know if anyone else covered this. I can't say, and I don't want to say, but I I know they haven't. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Something that I believe may be completely overlooked and was only in one small section of one newspaper I found, the Times, a very credible source. The New York Times? No. No, 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 the London Times. This is, I believe, could be extremely overlooked. All right. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Where the second portion of the woman, the trunk of the woman, was found in the Thames, at that same place, quote, the body of a newly born male infant, right? What? I can show you where I pulled that from the paper. From This is the first torso. Does anyone talk about this? I've never watched Jack the Ripper documentaries or the Tim murders, Tim Borso murders. But what do we know? The breast was found and it was suckled on recently. She's a mother. The second portion of the trunk of the woman found in the Thames was at the same place as a, quote, body of a newly born male infant. Was that not in the book that you read about this either? No, this is in the newspapers. I, I'm done with that book. I'll show you in the damn newspaper. Well, that's crazy if that wasn't in like any other research that you found, but only in the newspaper source you went direct to. I am the only person who has clipped this newspaper. So it'll tell you who's clipped. Yeah, it? yeah. And I'm the only person who's clipped it. Oh, wow. So damn. Oh, my gosh. What if we solve the Jack the Ripper case or come up something? Let's new? let's assume that 
this child was the woman's baby since she had recently suckled breast. Holy shit. I mean, like the fact itself is maybe not, I mean, it's shocking, but it's more shocking that that is something that may have been overlooked. Was literally him. mentioned once. It's like, oh, there's a there's a dead child in here. Let's um, let's just not talk about it anymore. That's crazy. Right? Right? <laughs> what the Fuss. So killer may have been the husband or father or whatever of, the, you know, the baby, like baby daddy. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. But does anyone else, you guys have heard the uh, the Tim's torso murders? Has anyone said anything about a kid? I mean, because maybe they have. Maybe I'm not like on to something crazy. But to me, I was like, damn, that seems important. Yeah, I would You agree. know, she is obviously a mother. They can tell that she had suckled breasts. So she's a re- recent mother breastfeeding and her son was found in the water next to her torso. Can you not get any like, so if this is Jack the Ripper, I mean, what the fuck, dude, that is a huge lead. <laughs> what the fuck? And they Agreed. mentioned it. It was a, like two sentences and then they were like, moving on. I guess they didn't, you know, just uh, whatever there's a dead baby in there, you know? That's wild. Hey, Wolfie. Hey, Wolfie, what's up? So I'll, I'll put that on the Discord tonight. I did start a Jack the Ripper thread, so we'll put that on there. Anyway, I'm moving on. That's nuts, right? Yes. Hey, Lauren. What's up, Lauren? Dr. William Henry Kempster, the divisional medical officer, and I'm going to kind of read what he says and skip some things, but some of the things are very telling. He says, last Friday between 9 and 10 o'clock, I was called to the police station at Battersea. I went and there was then shown to me a portion of the human body. This was the left side with the thorax and was of a female. It was perfectly fresh. And in my opinion, death had not occurred many hours. It was the fully developed breast of a woman about 40 years of age, I should say, and she must have been very stout. That's a good description there. There were some of the internal viscera attached to that portion of the body. He's talking about the breast here still, Uh just kind of fucking disgusting. There was also a portion of the diaphragm. There was also some of the lungs, the breast. God, the lungs were attached to the fucking breast. Jesus Christ, dude. I just like got that mental image. That's yeah, that's terrible. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> Just be numb to it. Oh, my God. All right. Anyway, the breast had been separated between the second and third cervical vertebrae under the part that had been cut below the ribs and the pelvis. The vertebrae had also been cut at a higher part in attempt to separate the body diagonally. And removing the left arm, a complete division of the clavicle and scapula had been made. That is, the whole of the shoulder bone had been removed with the sockets. So it's literally like pulling a, a chicken out, a rotisserie chicken apart, right? I could form a decided opinion of the instrument used in dividing the body, a knife and some kind of saw. I'll show you where I saw that. It said something saw. I'll just put it legible. I did try to look up saws used in the 1800s. I didn't find anything that would match that word, but the way it's kind of, I, I'll have to show you what I'm talking about. Because that's important too. Like who would have that sort of saw? It's not yeah. just a saw. He put something there. I thought it said seesaw, but that didn't make any sense. The whole of the vessels of that portion of the body, which I first saw were empty and there were no coagulated veins. The muscles were retracted, that is, were divided, indicating division immediately after death. And this view is confirmed by the state of the blood vessels. Four hours later, the right side of the body, the thorax exactly matching the left I had seen, was brought to me. This was separated from the trunk in precisely the same manner as the other, and the two formed a part of the same body. Of this, I am certain. I mean, they literally put them together like puzzles. On the next day, I was shown the whole of the head being the face and skin with the exception of the chin and a portion of one side of the mouth. The scalp had been cut forcibly, pulled off the skull with a knife. So they're trying to take the hair off. This Ugh. woman, this woman from her description had short hair, dark hair, you know, and we think we know who the woman is, but the fact is he's trying to make it where she's not identifiable doing this, right? Uh, while the knife passing down the face had cut the mouth and cut off the nose, but had not detached the, the ladder, the nose, the cutting of the chin was a clean cut. The por- so instead of cutting the head off completely, he just decided to mutilate the head. That's what I'm reading. And she has short hair, so he decided to scalp her. That's what we're reading here. That's So is this whoever's doing this trying to hide it? He's not trying to get caught. He's not trying to make the newspapers. So mm-hmm. he's probably spreading them out to minimize, you know, to, for someone seeing a whole bundle, right. right? But then go five years later when he's chunking them over Frankenstein's house. Like, mm-hmm. that's fucking... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? A very strange coincidence, perhaps. Yeah. This portion, the scalp of the face had been cut off within 36 hours. I had seen it. My conclusion is, uh, with a very large bruise on the right temple, the scalp, is that this showed there was a blow immediately before death. At that part, there was three incisions, one evidently from a cut caused by the removal of the scalp from the skull. But there were two anterior incisions, much lacerated, giving the appearances of a blow or blows with a blunt weapon. All right. So that was the 7th of September. So let me go to the 10th because still more body parts are found. Mm -hmm. Two more pieces were recovered on the 10th. A companion forearm, so the other forearm, to the one that was found the previous day, both handless, meaning they're trying, whoever's doing this, trying to not get her identified, right? Mm -hmm. This was found on the Albert Embankment in Lambeth. The other was a piece of a foot discovered near the mouth of the Surrey Canal. These body parts are being dumped at different locations, not only at different time periods, but at different locations. Now, one or two, two were found near near to London, the actual big city, which I don't know. Is he getting confident? Because this is three days later. Did he see the newspaper? He's like, ah, oh, they're not going to catch me. One was dropped off above the city of London, the other one below. That's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, because he knows one part is going to travel through the Thames up and be, be seen. Nuts, right? That he went to two different places. So he does have transportation unless he's walking around with severed body parts in his bag. And as you'll see, the pelvis, for example, is about 30 pounds. So who wants to carry that shit and walk all the way, you know, 20 blocks? Yeah. Mr. Hayden, the resident medical officer at Chapman and Wandsworth Union Workhouse, talks about the skill required. Now, this is where I think he's a butcher. Perhaps even done by more than one man. Quote, even such an experienced medical man as Mr. Hayden regards the sawing through the pelvis. The pelvis was sawed in half. Mr. Hayden regards the sawing through the pelvis as has been done in this case, apart from its revolting character, as a heavy piece of manual work for one man. I kind of want to get a pelvis. Like maybe I not, don't think you should do no, that. No, I want to, like as a short, like an animal no. pelvis maybe, and try to saw through it. Because I think it's important. You have a guy sawing. For, can you imagine going into a butcher shop? <laughs> All right, I'm going to need a whole cow carcass. This is just for research. The, just for research. The portion of the that pelvis forms the left side of the lower portion of the trunk, and it must have weighed, when first committed to the water, about 30 pounds. Is he walking with 30 pounds in a knapsack or whatever? Maybe. Or is he killing these people right at the shores, right at the docks, right at the barges? Is he killing them somewhere else, way out in town, and then walking down? I mean, he's got to be a... close by regardless. Okay, yeah. Because if you're in the city of London, right? Like, if you lived in the outskirts, you're not going to obviously dump something downtown. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, if you're trying not to get caught. If he's into the celebrity, maybe, but is somebody who lives But there, to kill a mother and her baby... It's personal, I think. I think it was, I mean, as of right... think it was random? Yeah, you know, I think it was a domestic thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I killed the mother right in front of the, the newborn baby and, you know, I don't want to take care of a baby. Shit, you get pregnant? No, I'm just kidding. I would take care of it. <laughs> And then kill me. <laughs> <laughs> My idea of taking care of something may be a little different. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, agree. He'd be like more like kept like a barn animal. <laughs> Our dogs would be treated better probably. All right. So attached to that pelvis, which was 30 pounds, were the lower vertebrae, internal parts, including the uterus. The large bone in the lower part of the back had been sawn through and the stomach roughly cut away. So he's not Jack the Ripper here cutting with surgical precision. He's just trying to minimize the body part. So he, when he walks to the river, it's not as noticeable. You know, he's for instance, I read earlier. Earlier, the arms were pulled from the sockets. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to cut through these. I'm just going to brace myself and pop them on out. That's what he's doing. That's yeah. what that means, right? I mean, there's no precision in that. There's no surgical precision. You think of Jack the River and he's like somebody some strong, though. Rich guy who's like, you know, skilled in anatomy. This is some fucking brute, man, who's pulling the shoulder bullet freaking socket out of the freaking thing, right? Mm. Look at this. This is also, this is also so incredibly damn important. Okay. And everyone else has missed this. No, I don't know. I didn't. Oh, okay. I don't listen to other people's <laughs> shit. So I don't Joke. watch documentaries. Okay, fine. So I don't know. But I'm just saying I got it. And if no one else did it, and that just proves I'm the best. I'm just kidding. I'm the, I'm the damn only one that saved his newspaper. I fucking promise you that. That you know. <laughs> that the, you know for sure. Probably the only one that spent two hours trying to fucking read it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Brandon, I wish I could make that an emoji. <laughs> emoji. Yeah. All right, dude, what in the fuck? Check this out. The thigh part had some marks upon it, which were very suggestive. Some marks were are like scalds in life, yet while others showed, quote, post-mortem burns, as if the joint had been placed on something burning. Interesting. Right? Okay, so whoever did this has to have access to something burning. Like, what profession needs that? And don't say cigars. <laughs> uh, I don't right? know. Right? Kind of crazy. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, let me show you something that I found intense. And this is only basic research, but check this out. I found this uh, article here. This is from Reynolds News. Anyway, it's, it's an article about butchers in the 18th century and how most of them were criminals. I mean, I would imagine it's not like a, um, it wasn't a maybe desirable occupation back then, you know? I know. It's kind of like um, executioners. Yeah. You know, those guys were all inbreded. You know right. why? You know why all the executioners were inbreded? Because it was like a class. They were like caste system mm. type thing. I mean, kind of, but the, so the execution or work directly for the king. The king. Yeah, exactly. Work directly under the king. When you see an executioner in the local market when you're buying fruit, you don't go talk to him because he is the bringer of death. Therefore, you don't send your daughter to go on a date with the son mm -hmm. because they're in the same family. So what happens? Brother and sister marry each other and they're all inbred. It is one of those things that you do not communicate with the executioner. Ugh. So think about it. You no, have these I don't want to think about it. inbred executioners and and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do some executions here in a little bit. I got this great old, old book about botched executions. 90% are botched. And a lot of people, if I'm going to get my head cut off today, I'm going to go get all the money I have. I'm not going to need it where I'm going and tip the executioner because the executioner <laughs> can. What? Yeah. The executioner, if you give him a good tip, maybe he'll sharp, sharpen that freaking blade and have. Oh, my God. <laughs> have a clean cut. So your head's not not all like, oh, God, and I'm in, oh I'm, in, God. I'm in pain. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Stop, 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 I'm still stop, alive. Stop. Oh, my God. Speaking of which, oh, I'll wow. show Speaking no, of which. No, no, just real quick. No. Save it. I have a story about a chicken with a head No. Cut. It lived for 18 months. Oh, my God. Absolutely not. I don't want to know. All right. Anyway, on this article, this is what this is what I found that is so damn interesting. So this is the article right here. One second. I'm just going to read this. All right, look at this picture. That butchers are brutes. Kind of like today. Think about Texas Chainsaw massacre. I'm sorry if you're a butcher and I just said that, but that's what we think of. I mean, you're, you're sawing up freaking chicken and pigs that time, yeah. Early advocates of vegetarianism, such as Thomas Tyron, argued that shedding animal blood awakened quote, poisonous fires. Not not a physical fire. Say, so, well, it is carbon emissions, but... Which, you know. which once released from the carcass would inflict those exposed to it. Principally butchers with all manner of wicked inclinations. Tyron, in fact, was quite via in his arguments that butchers were potentially violent and criminal. In a letter to a friend which he entitled Of the Employments Arising from the Fountain of Darkness, butchers are touched with the, with like, per, it's old English, man, pernicious evil. This guy found a link between butchers and being criminals. It's very interesting because I put in the Discord on the Jack Ripper thread. I know I'm getting kind of long-winded, but this is very interesting. I'm reading this book by uh, Vronsky, Peter Vronsky, called Sons of Cain. He says, and this is a theory that, and I've talked about this once before, homicidal mania, homicides in general, killing of your fellow man, because we're the only only mammals that do it, all without a reason. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. There's no dog serial killers. Right. There's no lion serial killers. Mm -hmm. They do it for feeding. Right. Or they get no fight or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. But we do it for fun. And the theory is, it always wasn't that way. It only started after we started animal husbandry, domesticating animals to eat. So something in... We're not supposed to eat animals at all. Okay, if you think about our caveman ancestors, we're not killing woolly mammoths. We're, pri if we believe in evolution, we're primates with these. We don't even have fucking claws. Mm -hmm. We swing from trees and pick up nuts and berries. We're not meat eaters. We're berry pickers, literally. We're nut pickers. That, that's the truth. No one no one wants to think that because we're at the top of the food chain, but we, we got to the top because of our brain power. You know what I'm saying? But when 
we were just basic mammals, we weren't out killing mammoths. Yeah, we did eventually when we got, you know, when we found out how to make spears and stuff. But our homicidal mania only started after we started consuming meat because that's not what we're supposed to consume. Interesting theory. We're only supposed to eat vegetables and shit we find on the ground like fucking squirrels. And, and now we've got a taste for blood. I mean, like we're squirrels eating nuts, literally. Yeah. It's just a weird theory. But anyway, that doesn't prove anything. I just thought that was really crazy. All right, I know I'm getting way overwinded here. Let's talk about who this woman was because we do kind of know who it is. I didn't see the exact name yet, but I'm going to keep looking because I think it's very important. But we can kind of pinpoint her. On the 10th of September, a few days after, a person, which is a female, living at the South Street Battersea Fields came to the police station and informed Inspector Hollett that her lodger, a female, had missing since the second. The description corresponded in all the peculiars given with what is known of the deceased. She had marked features, remember? They're yep. Very the different. The burn on her face and stuff. Yeah. In respect to the contour of the person, hair, nose, ears, which were somewhat characteristic, likely to be a woman who had left her husband, had someone she visited at the West End. Now, this is the landlord. She's right. renting an apartment to a woman who is most likely the woman dead. She said that, quote, she was visiting someone at the West End. Jack the Ripper, did he live at the West End? Has anyone know. ever asked that question? And was in the habit of coming late home late at night and early in the morning. This woman was always boasting of large sums of money she was to receive. She was, you know, divorced her husband, ran away, and oh, eventually I'm going to get a payout type of thing. I don't know. Anyway. Or was she in prostitution and that was the money um, she was getting? Maybe. All I know is that that is definitely her kid that was floating right next to her torso. So anyway, that's what I have on this case so far. I don't know. What do you guys think? Super interesting. So, so, so what are we doing on Saturday? I want to know what's what's next in our journey. Oh, I'm just going to... To Jack the Ripper. No, I'm just going to completely abandon this. Stop like, it! Like I always do. <laughs> I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Uh, I don't know yet. I'm still fucking researching shit, man. All right, fine. But so a couple things that I found, I'm just going to run through them. Her arm, part of the arm smeared with tar. The freaking baby. The baby. Next, mm-hmm. next to her torso. She was a mother, according to her suckled breast, right? Um, what's another good thing? We know that the she, killer tried to hide the body, not trying to make the newspapers. Didn't think of cutting off the head or didn't want to. Just mutilated the head after she died. Post-mortem. Mutilated it somehow. Oh, maybe if I cut her nose off, they won't identify her. He scalped her because she had short hair. We, I can safely say, and I think you guys can agree, this guy was not trying to make it the papers. He was cutting up the body to dispose of it and not get caught. And if he would have got away with it, then there may not be a Jack the Ripper. Who knows? That's a very important point. Mm-hmm. Also, in the same place of the torso was the body of a newly born infant male, which is fucking insane, right? <laughs> and some other stuff I talked the about. Burned the burned arm. Burned on the arm. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that whoever did this had to cut, would pull from the sockets, not just cut up like he's going to do eventually, and actually saw down through the pelvis, which apparently yep. is super hard to do. And he had to carry these body parts, the pelvis, and one example, being 30 pounds. So how close was he to the river? A lot of people think he was a bargeman, or maybe more than one. I don't know. He's so close to the river. He's he's at least in the vicinity of it. Yeah, yeah. So West End. Here's the questions I really want to know for myself. Who has access to fire that could burn. Why was the arm burned? Was he, maybe he was trying to uh, burn it and uh, decided uh, it's not burning. Because he's in the middle of the city. You can't just light a body on fire. Yeah. Like you're well, burning anyone trash. Could, if anyone could have access to that. Yeah. So I don't know. But the tar. The tar is very interesting. Maybe Why would he do that? Maybe. I mean, and who has access to tar? Yeah. And the, the kid, like who was the kid? Like what the fuck? Like what is this shit? Yeah. Anyway, those are the questions I'm still working on. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. That was really interesting. We're going to do Jack the Ripper stuff like that because it's kind of getting me more we're, motivated. We're, we're lean. We're heading towards that. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and that was for y'all. It was awesome. Thank like you. Us. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll see you on Saturday. All right. Thank you guys so much. We love you. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>